I hope we do work again, Will, because I don't know how much time you got left. As a young guy trying to achieve the success that you have already achieved. You ain't that young. When, well, just Stop hold on. with everybody that's hold a little on. bit older. Well, let's just wait a minute. Nobody. It appears that Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell may have subtly hinted at Kevin Hart being a bit of a mixed breed in the Hollywood scene. Rumors are swirling after Wahlberg and Ferrell dropped some cryptic remarks that seem to point in Hart's direction. So, what exactly did they say? Having numerous critically acclaimed movies under his belt, Mark Wahlberg became one of the most renowned faces in Hollywood, playing his infamous role of Cade Yeager in Michael Bay's popular Transformers franchise. Wahlberg tried his hands on sci-fi movies. Further, the actor even shared the screen with the renowned comedian Kevin Hart in the 2022 film, Me Time. Following their performance and working together, Mark Wahlberg appeared on Kevin Hart's show Heart to Heart to recall his career timeline. Appearing on the show early on in 2023, Wahlberg spent quality time discussing his inception and struggles in Hollywood. However, soon Hart went on to attack the actor for his growing age. That young. Feeling humiliated by Hart's approach to the discussion, Discussion about his tenure in Hollywood, Mark Wahlberg slammed the comedian for his ageism. You ain't that effing young, stop effing with everybody that's a little bit older, Wahlberg called out. Further recalling Hart's previous humiliating incident of ageism with MCU actor Don Cheadle, Wahlberg criticized the host for his malevolent approach. For context, in 2021, Kevin Hart and Don Cheadle were engaged in a discussion about age and the meaning of damn in a now viral clip from Peacock's Heart to Heart. The series Heart to Heart had been promoted as an unplanned, unscripted, unfiltered talk show, and just one week after its release, a portion of it had garnered significant attention. Earlier that week, a viewer shared a clip from the Peacock series on Twitter that showcased what seemed to be an amusing exchange between Hart and guest Don Cheadle. The moment arose when Cheadle mentioned his age. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Despite Hart's attempt to apologize, Cheadle's demeanor remained unimpressed. Just understand, I did not mean it the way it came out, Hart insisted. We'll take a poll on how you meant it with people here later, after the show's over, Cheadle retorted. The conversation then evolved into a playful debate as they attempted to decipher the exact nature of Hart's damn. Cheadle pointed out that the subsequent damn Hart uttered as he tried to clarify himself differed from the initial one. As Cheadle plainly stated, these were two different dams. The clip quickly gained traction, being shared more than 20,000 times and accumulating over 70,000 likes. Despite the comedic nature of the exchange, some viewers interpreted it as a subtle form of mockery from Hart towards Cheadle. He looked like the words actually hit him in the face, one observer commented on Cheadle's reaction. Another viewer tweeted, It was so uncomfortable to watch. While the interaction with Cheadle was undoubtedly contentious, this next incident took offense to a new level. Some time back, Kevin invited Will Ferrell onto his show only to insinuate that their collaboration should be carried out soon as Will's time on Earth was limited. This audacious remark not only only raised eyebrows but also ignited a firestorm of criticism, leaving many to wonder how far Hart is willing to push the boundaries of comedy at the expense of his esteemed colleagues. I hope we do work again, Will, because I don't know how much time you got left. Um, and I would, you know, I would love I, for us to I, do something before it's too late, man. Kevin's remarks struck such a nerve that they left Will momentarily speechless. But Will eventually mustered the courage to confront Kevin about his alleged inside knowledge of a life-threatening disease that even Will himself hadn't been unaware of. There's something you know about me that I don't know? Like medical health? History. Fans believe that Kevin was flabbergasted due to Will's round ballish response. What an amazing response to a proverbial jab taken at him. He didn't block, he didn't counter, he just weaved. He did it so beautifully that it even threw off the attacker. It made Kevin break. However, others believe that Kevin is just playing out his character. Man, the comedic chemistry between the two is amazing to watch. How quick they are to keep building off of each other's jokes, and how Kevin wanted to keep it going but broke character because Will is just too funny. Adding to the mounting drama, Kevin engaged in a light spat with none other than Dr. Dre, the legendary artist responsible for shaping the careers of countless musicians and his involvement in various high-profile business ventures. Kevin had the guts to accuse Dre of false age, making him older than he already is. 60 You're door. knocking a 60 door. In any case, more recently, actor and comedian Monique also spoke about how Kevin Hart is allegedly a Hollywood plant who thrives at mocking comedians in need. I didn't ask Kevin Hart to do anything. He said, I'll executive produce, I'll partner with you. I said, good shit, Kevin, because we're in a deal with Endemol. 
Monique prefaced her comments about Hart by admitting that he wrote a check to support her when she was down bad and that she would be forever grateful for it, though she made a point to say that she paid it back with interest. When the actress was a guest on Hart's podcast Comedy Gold Mines in 2021, he introduced her as an auntie, a mama, a spirit, and called her Mama Mo. She spoke on the podcast about Oprah, Perry, and Precious director Lee Daniels, who had not yet publicly apologized to her. Hart said he'd reach out to Perry to coordinate squashing the beef, to which Perry was allegedly not amenable, but she said Hart promised her he would execute produce and partner with her on whatever she was working on, which excited her because she and Hicks were working on a talk show deal. Hart's manager Dave Becky allegedly told Monique's production company that Hart wanted nothing to do with her. I called Kevin Hart immediately and told him, they said you didn't want to work with me, she said. He said, it's just a miscommunication. We're going to talk Tuesday. That was two years ago. I've never talked to Kevin Hart again. That's what we're faced with. You allow someone to come between your relationship with a woman you said was like your mother. Now, the weird thing about this is that Monique isn't the first person to expose Kevin Hart for allegedly being a power slave. You see, just a month ago, Cat Williams sat on the same seat on Club Shay Shay podcast talking about Kevin Hart. Williams began by highlighting the astonishing trajectory of Kevin Hart's career in Hollywood by first questioning the unprecedented speed with which Hart achieved success. In 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold-out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy club. Williams went on and suggested that Hart's rapid ascent was unusual and posed the question of whether Hart had truly paid his dues in the competitive world of stand-up comedy. The comedian emphasized the significance of the journey and questioned whether Hart's seemingly instant success was indicative of a different narrative. He already had his deals when he got here. Have we heard of a comedian that came to L.A. and in his first year in L.A. he had his own sitcom? on network television and had his own movie called Soul Plane that he was leading? No. In the interview, Cat Williams introduced the term plant to describe someone who seemingly appears out of nowhere and attains success without the traditional struggles that comedians often face, and then claims they are self-made. Williams then drew attention to the fact that Kevin Hart's documentary with Chris Rock revealed his comedy roots on the East Coast. He pointed to a perceived contradiction in Hart's narrative, noting, he just did his documentary with Chris Rock where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. So how, simultaneously, was he here in Los Angeles doing the same thing? It didn't happen. Williams probed into the inconsistencies in Hart's story, challenging the widely accepted narrative of an overnight success. In any case, Kevin Hart also once addressed the rumors of his overnight success. In 2014, Kevin Hart sat down with Oprah for an interview on Oprah Prime, where he delved into the intricacies of his skyrocketing career and the harsh realities of finding success in Hollywood. Hollywood has a way of making everything seem like an overnight success, Hart explained during the interview. But I've had 18 years in the business. I put in my time. I got dues that have been paid and paid again and paid one more time after that. I stayed true to my dreams and eventually they came true. Oprah pointed out the countless hardworking individuals striving to break into the industry and achieve success. She probed Hart on why he was able to do it while so many others faced insurmountable challenges. The difference in me is that I paid attention to what people did before me, whether it was right or wrong, Hart reflected. Everybody that's successful lays a blueprint out. Not only did Hart pay attention, but even back in 2014, he surrounded himself with tangible reminders of those who paved the way for him, from Eddie Murphy to Chris Rock to Richard Pryor. The walls of his home adorned with pictures and paintings of comedians he considered mentors served as daily inspiration. I come down these steps every day. I look at Richard. He was great. I see Eddie. He was great. I see Chris Rock. He was great, Hart shared. It's a constant reminder. What am I trying to achieve? I want to be great. This unwavering motivation, as Hart expressed in the interview, was his belief in what set him apart in Hollywood. What separates me is my drive, he stated. My drive is other people's success. Anyway, Cat Williams didn't stop at questioning Kevin Hart's rapid rise. He also delved into the dynamics of Hollywood gatekeepers. Williams challenged the notion that there are no gatekeepers in the entertainment industry, asserting that he has observed individuals controlling access to opportunities. He used the example of Kevin Hart supposedly letting Tiffany Haddish into the industry, raising the question of whether gatekeepers do indeed exist. They tell you that there's no gatekeepers, but we keep seeing the same people open the gate. Didn't Kevin open the gate and let Tiffany in? Ain't he now opening it up for... 
Don't such and such. Cat Williams also addressed the issue of comedic standards during the interview. He explained that his refusal to compromise on certain content, specifically avoiding overtly home themes had led to him losing out on opportunities. Williams argued that he wasn't against humor but advocated for a more thoughtful and considerate approach to comedy that didn't rely on outdated and potentially offensive tropes. You see, Kat has a long history of calling out Hollywood elites and their shady ways of controlling black celebrities. In a 2013 interview with Black Tree TV while discussing his role in Scary Movie 5, Kat delved into some interesting topics, including a theory about black actors being forced to wear dresses on screen in order to Progress to the next level of fame. It's worth noting that this interview came out not long after Kevin Hart appeared on an SNL skit wearing a dress. For context, it all started when Dave Chappelle, another revered comedian, appeared on Oprah's show in 2006, where he talked openly about his refusal to accept a $50 million deal from Comedy Central. He felt that such deals came with strings attached, and he was unwilling to be controlled or humiliated for the sake of a paycheck. Chappelle's revelations didn't end there. He recounted being asked to wear a dress for a movie scene, an experience that left him deeply uncomfortable. According to him, many comedians had faced similar situations, having to don dresses on screen, and it often coincided with a critical juncture in their careers. This, too, was a nod to the prevailing industry belief that black entertainers needed to cross this peculiar threshold to advance. Fast forward to 2012, when Kevin Hart was asked about Dave Chappelle's claims during a radio show. While he didn't explicitly say no to ever wearing a dress, Hart emphasized the importance of personal boundaries. He stated that crossing these boundaries was non-negotiable for him. You have to have boundaries, you have to have limits that you refuse to cross. He even cited examples of bizarre requests he had received, such as dribbling a basketball on a talk show, which he politely declined. Hart stressed the importance of protecting his brand and the potential risks of compromising it. However, just a year later, Hart appeared in an SNL skit where he donned a dress, a move that drew sharp criticism from fans. Some accused him of being a sellout, arguing that he had contradicted his earlier stance. The skit portrayed him as a nine-year-old child pope, an image that many believed didn't align with the Kevin Hart they had come to know. The new pope is nine-year-old Oscar nominee, Kevenshene Wallace. Cat Williams seized this opportunity to reignite the feud. He suggested that Kevin Hart's actions on SNL were merely part of a larger pattern, insinuating that Hart was willingly playing by the industry's rules to secure fame and fortune. Williams opined that Hart's success allowed him to escape criticism for wearing a dress, as a long line of comedians had already done so before him. He pointed to movies like Big Mama's House and the Medea franchise as examples of previous instances where comedians had donned dresses. Williams didn't go all out in his attack on Hart. Instead, he subtly questioned the choices made by comedians who aimed for mainstream success. He hinted that some entertainers, including himself and Dave Chappelle, were willing to go against the grain and, as a result, might never attain the same level of fame as Hart. The feud took a heated turn when Kevin Hart, fed up with Williams' insinuations, unleashed his frustration during an appearance on The Breakfast Club radio show. Hart hit back hard, accusing Cat Williams of dodging responsibility for his actions, particularly his issues with the law and substance abuse. He argued that Williams had squandered opportunities and positioned himself as a risk to studios, which eventually led to a decline in his career. Hart wasn't mincing words. He laid the blame squarely on Williams' choices. Hart emphasized that he had worked diligently to achieve success and hadn't compromised his principles. He pointed to Williams' own issues, implying that Williams was trying to deflect blame by attacking him. According to Hart, comedy was a serious business, and those who succeeded did so through hard work and dedication not by succumbing to industry pressures. At its core, this feud became a clash of values and principles. Cat Williams seemed to represent a group of comedians who believed in staying true to their art and resisting any attempts at conformity, even if it meant staying on the fringes of the industry. On the other hand, Kevin Hart was seen as someone who had navigated the mainstream with remarkable success, but was not willing to compromise his values or image. Williams implied that comedians like him and Dave Chappelle couldn't reach the same level of success as Kevin Hart, because they refused to bow to the industry's whims. He suggested that they might have been pushed to do things they were uncomfortable with for the sake of fame. The message was clear. There were boundaries and crossing them came at a price. In any case, one of the reasons why Cat has always had it for heart is because Cat, he believed that the industry saw an opportunity to replace him with his fellow comedian Kevin Hart, but he didn't blame Hart for the situation. Apparently, the prolific comedian claimed Hart was a puppet being strung along by powers greater than himself. But Williams also asserted, in his mind, Hart being a puppet wasn't his 
fault while comparing himself to the True Story star. We don't get mad. Just because I'm better than some black dudes doesn't mean I'm better than no black dudes, Hart said. I'm saying if you want to be mad at Kermit the Frog, don't be mad at Kermit the Frog. Be mad at Jim Henson. Don't say F Donald Duck when you really mean F Walt Disney. But Williams also shared he had nothing against Hart at the time despite his feelings towards him. I don't care nothing about that happens to Kevin Hart. I just wish him the best. I just know that that's somebody's hand is stuck up that baby, you understand? Oh, we're a puppet show, boo-boo. Please believe it, he continued. In a separate interview with Rover Radio, Williams addressed the conspiracy that Kevin Hart might be behind his controversies. Williams was asked if his scandals were a ploy to tear Williams down to put Hart in his former spot. But although Williams shrugged off the conspiracy, he did believe Hart was set up as a possible replacement. The fault wasn't Hart's, however. The real truth of the matter is that I already knew what the situation was, and I had already stepped to the side at the point, Williams said of his comedic career. In the industry, as it was in that small realm, was wondering what's gonna happen with comedy. So, I helped in the blueprint to create a Kevin Hart to fill that vacuum. Williams further elaborated that Hart couldn't affect his career because at the time he had no real power. He doesn't have any power at all. There are no powerful puppets in puppet land. Not that the person is bad because they're a puppet, but they're not making their own decisions. Their decisions are being made by a corporation. And so, it's that corporation that I have issue with, Williams shared. Williams also brought up a theory that corporations don't care for Hart all that much. In fact, they might view Hart the same way that they view Williams. If you like somebody, you're not gonna let somebody do 12 movies in the course of 12 months, Williams said. You could have broke 12 movies up in four years and given somebody a wonderful extended period of time in their craft instead of giving somebody 12 movies in 12 months. That sounds like you hate that person. In any case, just like Cat Williams and Monique, Mark Wahlberg is no stranger to exposing shady Hollywood elites. In fact, he has made it his life mission to create a better version of Hollywood. In 2023, Wahlberg revealed his plans to create a Hollywood 2.0, and that sent shockwaves through Tinseltown. With his signature charisma and passion for making a difference, Wahlberg possibly aims to usher in an era of positivity. Free from the shady dealings and unscrupulous practices that have tainted the industry for far too long. Last year, the 52-year-old heartthrob waved goodbye to the chaos of Los Angeles and embraced the promise of a fresh start in the tax-friendly haven of Nevada. Wahlberg, like many others, has apparently grown weary of California's issues with crime, homelessness, and excessive wokeness. By seeking refuge in Nevada, he's not only giving his own family a better life, but also laying the foundation for a Hollywood that stands for something greater. Wahlberg's quest to build a new cinematic empire in Sin City is fueled by a desire to create opportunities for aspiring talent and provide a haven for creatives to thrive. With a heart of gold and a vision for a cleaner, kinder entertainment industry, he passionately lobbied Nevada lawmakers to pass a bill that would bolster tax credits for film production. Imagine a Hollywood where good virtues and integrity take center stage and everyone is given a chance to shine without the burden of unethical practices. But it doesn't end there. Wahlberg's ambitious plans to create 10,000 jobs in the studio alone could be the cornerstone of a Hollywood 2.0 that values hard work, dedication, and talent above all else. The average salary of $100,000 more than the norm is a testament to his commitment to ensuring that everyone involved in the creative process is treated with the respect and fairness they deserve. In his pursuit of creating a clean and good version of Hollywood, Wahlberg isn't just content with making blockbuster movies. No, he envisions a holistic approach, training both aspiring actors and filmmakers to become the next generation of storytellers. His investments in strategic locations, along with plans for an $8 million training facility for UNLV film studios, students, prove that he's walking the talk. With the film bill on the table, promising generous tax breaks for studios operating in Southern Nevada until 2043, Wahlberg's Hollywood 2.0 is poised for a stunning debut. By creating an environment that fosters creativity, inclusivity, and genuine storytelling, he's daring to challenge the status quo and build an entertainment empire that leaves no room for discrimination, gatekeeping, or shady dealings. And the lights of Hollywood could soon be coming and shining in Las Vegas as the Nevada legislature debates its largest tax break package ever to
to bring productions to town. With Wahlberg's Hollywood 2.0 on the horizon, the industry may finally be forced to reckon with its demons. His mission to create a cleaner, more virtuous Hollywood that values integrity and inclusivity challenges the very foundations on which the entertainment empire was built. The power structures that have long enabled those at the top to dictate the fate of aspiring talents are being questioned and dismantled. With each step toward a more inclusive and virtuous Hollywood, Wahlberg's movement gains momentum, drawing attention to the need for greater accountability and transparency within the industry. In any case, with Wahlberg and a clique of industry veterans boldly stepping up to challenge these Tinseltown elites, whispers suggest that we might be on the brink of a seismic shakeup in the shadowy world of Hollywood. Anyway, that's it for this video, folks. Bye.